What's good, YouTube? I got another question from my Patreon supporters. The question is, why do husbands feel inferior to their wives if she makes more money than him? Why does this destroy their relationships? How can you be in competition with your own spouse if you're supposed to be one? All right, good question. Um, I'll attack this question, not necessarily from a place of marriage, but just relationships in general. The woman making more money than the man. But before I start, this video is sponsored by Aura. Are you worried about your personal information falling into the wrong hands? You should be. In 2022, it happens to over 40 million people. Stay protected with Aura. They are number one in identity theft and financial fraud protection. In today's digital age, hackers are more cunning than ever. Aura's advanced technology and expert team are here to defend you. With Aura, you'll get real-time alerts ensuring you always know when suspicious activity occurs and what to do about it. Want to know if your personal information has already been stolen? Sign up right now to see if you've been compromised. And if the worst happens, the 24-7 support team is just a call away, ready to help you resolve any issues quickly and efficiently. And if that's not enough, don't forget that Aura backs up their promises with $1 million worth of identity theft protection insurance. Sign up for Aura's two-week trial today and experience peace of mind like never before. Visit Aura.com forward slash KevHick today. Now onto this topic. I'm going to jump right into it. Most of the time, 85 to 90% of the time, the woman making more money in her relationship isn't what triggers the man to feel inferior to her, right? A man might not feel like a man, but that doesn't mean he's feeling inferior to you, right? A man can go through self-doubt cycles. A man can go through challenges in his uh, self-esteem uh, just because he's not performing the way he wants to perform. He's not uh, pulling his weight. This is a thing that happens all the time. This happens when men are not performing as well as their counterparts on their jobs. It's the same thing. Men want to feel like they're pulling their weight. So there's always that element. But in your case, uh, th the tone of this question would lead me to believe that maybe there's something else going on. Most of the time in my coaching, and I've been doing this for six years now, what I've what I've realized and what I've noticed is that a lot of the women who make more money than their partners and that becomes a problem, uh, it's not about the job or the money that she makes. It's the authority she assumes by being the breadwinner, right? There's an imbalanced dynamic that starts to happen. She assumes an imbalanced and to that man impractical amount of authority based on what she brings into the house. Right. So he's not jealous of the money, so to speak, but he does become resentful of the authority that you snatch away because you make the money. OK, it's very easy to emasculate a man and not be aware of it. And a lot of times women who make the money, women who have great jobs, women who are very successful when they date men who don't have those same accolades. They like to point to a man being intimidated or a man being frustrated or a man competing with them. And that's not always the case. It, it does exist and it has happened and it, it does happen, obviously, but it's not always the case. It's not the money that ends up running the relationship most of the time. It's the authority that that woman brings home, right? Form follows function. If you boss people around or tell people what to do or lead people or operate in some level of authority for eight hours a day, it's very difficult to turn that off in your relationship sometimes, especially if you're dating people with certain personalities. If you're dating a passive person and you assume authority at work, when you go home, your passive person isn't going to fight you for authority. They'll just feel emasculated. They'll just feel talked down to. They'll just feel ran over and eventually become resentful. That what you do most is that what you do best. It's the human condition that man or woman, whoever assumes authority, starts to become a little bit proud of themselves, right? It's a hard thing to lead people, especially to accomplish great tasks and goals. Women like men who are bosses, who are leaders, who are in power at their jobs, not just because they have money, but because they assume a certain masculinity. Being in power at a job makes a man more masculine in his relationships, in his function socially. Women like to be around men who are powerful, who can take charge, who can lead, right? The men who do this the best are men who are in charge or who run things at their jobs or who run things at their companies. It's why women are so attracted to these alpha males. If that's the pattern that's created in a man's life when he gets hold of power, that he self-identifies with being powerful, that he self-identifies with having authority, that he assumes a certain leadership, sometimes even dominance over other people, if that same attractive quality you see in men is a result of them assuming authority in other capacities for the majority of their lives, then how as a woman could you actually expect not to have a similar thing happen to you when you assume authority, when you've been in power, when you've succeeded and been known by your title and not your humanity or your femininity, so to speak? It's the human condition 
to mold yourself into whichever portion of you has to show up more often. Most of the time we see our spouses a lot less than we see our coworkers, our subordinates. Most women who are successful, who make a lot of money, have a habit of treating their husbands and partners like subordinates eventually, making decisions without them, not consulting them for household business, assuming power and authority over the decision-making that used to be shared, used to be cooperative, used to be collaborative, responding to conflict differently. Again, form follows function. That which you do most is that which you do best. If you're a very good leader at your job, you'll likely become a very good leader at your house or some type of leader. And if that's not considerate of the personality of the person that you've dated, that you've married, that you've been sharing your life with, more often than not, that's what causes the destruction. That's what destroys the relationship. A person feels unconsidered, unloved, uncared for, unseen, not respected. Power has a way of corrupting good manners. It does change the way you handle your spouse a lot of times, especially if you don't feel like they're putting in as much as you're putting in, especially if you're keeping score, if you're counting, if you're taking notes. It's very difficult to give someone equal power and authority in your relationship if you don't see them as an equal. If you don't think they're putting in equal, if you see yourself as a caretaker or a provider over them, like many women or many men who are the breadwinners, who have the power at their jobs, who are the more successful, you unfortunately enough start to treat your spouse as a subordinate sometimes and not as an equal in the relationship, not as an equal in the household or an equal decision maker. That assumed authority is what kills a relationship, not the money you bring in. In fact, many of the women I know who make a lot of money but aren't in a position of power at their job, they're just a very high paid subordinate, deal with this a lot less than the women who are running things at their job or who hold some level of authority, especially in male dominated industries where women have to become more masculine to deal with the men and to get their respect. Form follows function. You can't just turn that off. And most women don't. When they get home, they are the same person. They try to do something different. They attempt to do something different. But ultimately, their nature becomes the version of them that they have to call on the most. The part of their identity that they're most proud of. Their biggest accomplishment is usually their job. If this portion of yourself is what you're most proud of, why would you want to stump it out? Most don't. You want to feel proud of yourself at all times. You want to feel competent and in control and capable. This is the version of themselves most people would defer to if given that option and that experience. Men aren't intimidated by women with money and they don't love them any less. Women with money and power usually look down on their husband in some subconscious way that they don't even realize. This isn't to victimize any man who has a very successful woman or to assume you've done anything wrong. Just to acknowledge the fact that women in power don't often know how to put that power down at home. And no man has a dream of being talked down to, not being considered in decisions and having no authority in his household while being subconsciously and many times very consciously and aggressively emasculated. Again, I make no assumptions about any woman going through this, but these are the things that I see most often that cause the most issues with women who are successful and who have relationships that are crumbling. This is their side of the mess. Of course, there's another side. The guy has his own mess. Two imperfect people being imperfect with each other. But I'm addressing the part that you asked me about. I'm addressing what a woman who's successful, who's powerful, can contribute to her relationship that makes her man feel these other ways. That makes him feel resentful. That makes him feel there's a competition. That makes him feel unloved, unappreciated, and uncared for. He's not afraid. He's not intimidated. He's irritated. He's vexed. He's put off. He's frustrated. He's hurt. He's emasculated. And in trying to find that sense of self, trying to get himself together, he learns to put his foot down. And many times that means he either leaves the relationship or he starts to rebel in his behavior to gain his own power back because that authority has been taken away from him in the relationship. The best thing any successful woman can do is make sure that that power stays 50-50 and make sure that there's certain things that you just follow your man in so that he can maintain his sense of masculinity and purpose in the relationship, that he doesn't lose his voice because that's what happens with most men who have a problem with their successful woman eventually is that they ultimately lose their voice. Most men don't want to defer to abusive tactics to maintain authority. They don't want to yell. They don't want to argue. They don't want to intimidate. They don't want to punch or grab or choke or do any of those crazy things. They just want their woman to respect them, to consider them, 
to care about what they think. Too often a woman doesn't realize she's not done those things in a way that a man can interpret it. So to the question of how can you be in competition with your spouse if you're supposed to be one, that competition is usually the result of a man trying to maintain his sense of masculinity and his voice in the relationship. You're actually jockeying for positions of authority in the relationship. He's not competing with you professionally. He's rebelling against the power dynamic that shifted. Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, again, this doesn't assume that the woman is all at fault for anything that happens in a relationship. But this portion of it, this would be her side of the BS. This would be her thing to deal with. This doesn't assume that the guy who's on the receiving end of this particular issue that some women have is a perfect man. I'm just letting you know how women mess up in this area and then they don't understand that it's not them being successful or having money or having more accolades. It's the way they treat a man once they feel like they surpassed him, which is why so many of my clients often seek a man who makes more money than them because that's the prerequisite for them to respect a man's opinions and desires in a relationship. We know how common it is for women to want a man to make more money than them. This is one of those reasons why. Because some women can't fully respect a man that she doesn't admire or aspire to be more like. And if a man makes less money than you, then the likelihood is that that might not be the case. Unless you're talking spiritually. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Follow me at KFA24 on Instagram. If you need coaching, go to the link below. Thanks for being a patron supporter and thank you for the question. I'll get with y'all later.